my first visit. Well, actually, it's an embarrassing visit because when I visited him the last time, it was to try and persuade him not to run for office. I think I've written about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told Atiku and himself that they should please leave the grounds for young people. That was the last time we met, about five years ago. And uh, I call him secretly, Olori Kunku, the stubborn man. So he ignored my advice completely. So I came to see how he was doing after neglecting my advice. Wanted to see if both he and his wife were weathering Nigeria as, uh, as well as can be expected. And to wish them a happy Christmas. He's an old friend, as you know, very well. And it was as a friend that I told him, don't run, leave this thing alone. But he ignored me. Now that he has decided <clears throat> to run like Uluri Kuko, you called him, mm -hmm. uh, are you convinced otherwise now? Well, you know, something you may have noticed about me that most uh, heads of state, when they take office, I always leave them alone for about the first year. I don't know if you've seen that, if you've noticed that. Because they need, I know when they come in, they, they don't start from ground zero. They often start <clears throat> even lower than ground zero, and they have to make up. So I have this personal policy, whether it's Obasanjo or, or uh, Buhari or Jonathan, you'll notice that in the first year, I hardly ever say anything. And then people will ask me why I'm not talking. I say, go and ask the last person whether I spoke during the first year. So I'm adopting the same principle this year. At the end of one year, ask me that question. So what again. would you like <clears throat> to see him do in the next year? Ah, that's very simple. I came here with a seven-point agenda. And uh, we, have a, we had a very thorough discussion on those items.